Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video today I'm going to talk you through how I go about making my own wax melts. I'm going to be doing our best selling uh, wax melt scent which is uh, fresh coffee and also if you're not aware I sell the supplies to make your wax melts as well so wax and the fragrance oils and some of the containers. I will talk you through some of those very quickly now and then get on to the making process. Okay, so for those who might not be aware, my name is Matthew and I run rusticbarncandles.co.uk um, selling my own wax melts, but more importantly for you guys, selling the actual supplies that I use in my own wax melts. Um, so where we specialise is our fragrance oils. We also offer free CLP labels, so for those in the UK, uh, you need to put a legal sticker on the back of your candles or wax melts, which is a CLP label. So we offer those for free. Um, that is one sheet that has 24 labels on the sheet. Additional CLP labels are charged at 45p. So again, we're the cheapest around for CLP labels. At the minute we have 50 fragrance oils on our website. Um, all of exceptional quality. Just got a small example of, uh, to show you here today. Um, Spice Pumpkin, uh, Aromatic Woods, one of my favorite ones, that one. Uh, Rhubarb Vanilla, a very popular selling one. Uh, fresh Coffee, the number one selling fragrance oil that we have. And Himalayan Bamboo, again, a very strong and aromatic scent. Um, yeah, so there's 50 available on the website. Feel free to have a look at those. Free CLP labels with every bottle, 50 ml and above. So this is a 50 ml bottle. Um, we do smaller sizes of 25 ml and 10 ml. Those are your sample sizes. So you can buy those, first of all, to test the scent. Um, Please have a look at my Facebook page, Rustic Barn Candles, um, for customer feedback. Um, it's really been exceptional. We're so pleased with the feedback um, and can only thank you uh, for all the support that our customers are giving us. So those of you who haven't tried it, please do look at customer reviews first of all. You can see that on my Facebook page, Rustic Barn Candles, and feel free to order if you want to. Some of the other items that we offer is the wax melt containers. We've got a selection of shapes and sizes. From the smallest is our, is our 28 gram sample pot. So it comes with a pot and a lid. Great for little testers, little um, gifts in uh, crackers or things like that, you know, nice little size. From our, our round 50 gram pot sizes, so these hold 50 grams of wax. Um, Nice little shape one there, little segments that can be broken off. If you wish to use different colours in each segment, and if you're willing to put the time in to do so, um, then that's great. It has to be the same scent though, because it's going in the same pot. But something a bit different. Or the classical, uh, just a round pot there. It's what I use in my 50 gram pots, just a round pot. Looks real nice. And then to our larger sizes, um, Again, this holds 50 grams, just over 50 grams when filled to the top. This is a snap bar, very popular uh, wax melt container. And then one of my preferred ones is the heart shaped uh, clamshell. Goes like that. Here's a demonstration of one of those I've made up, but well, this is an actual one that I sell. So it looks very pretty on the back. And it's just my label on the front there, Russell Barnes. It shows you how to put your labels on, but yeah, beautiful uh, clamshell. This is what I'm going to be using today, this shape to make some of my fresh coffees. Yeah, so containers and fragrance oils, rusticbarncandles.co.uk, um, some excellent products. The wax we sell, or the wax I use, is the 4120 wax. It's a pillar wax uh, used for wax melts or uh, pillar candles. Um, it's a brilliant wax. I find that it's the best around, in my opinion. It's the only wax I use for my wax melts. I use a different wax for my candles. Um, yeah, feel free to have a look, check out the products. And for the rest of this video, I'm going to talk you through how I go about making my fresh coffee uh, wax melts. Okay, so some of the tools that you're going to need to make your wax melts, or the tools that I use, is um, I've got a pipette, so that's for taking out the fragrance oil out of the uh, bottle. Got a melting jug, melting jug with a stirring spoon, that's to melt your wax, empty at the minute. A measuring scale to weigh out your wax and your fragrance oil and a thermometer so this is an infrared thermometer this is what I use to measure the temperature of the wax basically so it doesn't get too hot and then so I know when it the wax reaches the right temperature when to add the fragrance oil to the wax 
So I've just measured out 300 grams of the wax. See that's there on the scale. Um, one item that I forgot to mention that I also use, just a little container to put your uh, fragrance oil into when you're measuring out the correct amount. So with the fragrance oil for my wax melts of fresh coffee, if you look on the product pages for each individual fragrance oil that I sell, I give the recommended percentage to use and for fresh coffee that is at 8%. So 8%, um, I find that to be a good percentage. It is still strong, very strong, because a very strong fragrance oil, fresh coffee. Um, if it's too strong for you, then you can use 7% or even 6%, and it's still very strong, even at 6%. Okay, so we've got 300 grams of wax, and we wanna add 8% of fragrance oil to that. So 8% is 24 grams of fragrance oil. So 8% of 300 grams is 24 grams of fragrance oil. If you look under all of my um, fragrance oil pages, I give you the percentage based on 300 grams of wax because I consider 300 grams of wax sort of like the minimum amount you want to be weighing out to use. Otherwise, it cools down too quickly. You can use less. You can weigh out 100 grams. The problem I find is it just cools down so quickly. So 300 grams, it sort of uh, stays liquid and, and it keeps the temperature for you to work with a bit longer. Obviously, you can use more than 300 grams. That works even better. Um, when I'm making mine, I normally do it in two kilo batches, so I've got two kilos in a big, big jug. Um, I'll show you those in another video another time. So I'm just using a glass uh, pipette. Um, if you want to use the plastic disposable ones, you can use them also. So now I'm just uh, extracting the fragrance oil from the bottle, which is fresh coffee in this case, until we get to 24 grams. Almost there now. Okay, so that's 24 grams of fragrance oil weighed out, 23.99. That's close enough for me. Okay guys, so in this example, I'm gonna be using the small batch method, which is the double boiler method. I've just got an old saucepan. Try and use an old one. You don't wanna use one of your good ones because they do get a bit messy, as you can see inside. Um, I've just put a very small amount of water in there, that's on the heat, and then get the jug with your wax in it and just rest that in there. Just leave that now to melt, keep gauging the temperature. So I'm going to be melting my wax to 70 degrees Celsius and I'll just be checking that with my uh, infrared thermometer. Okay, so now that the wax is on the double boiler melting method, you've got a bit of time to prep your area for where you're going to be pouring out your wax. So what I do is I spread out a load of my clamshell containers. So they're all ready, ready for me to pour. So I'm only doing 300 grams of wax. So that there should be more than enough containers, but always have some spare containers on the side just in case you've got more wax than you anticipated. So then you can always pour that into some extra containers. Clear all the space of the tools that you no longer need. Okay, so I've just taken the wax off the double boiler. It's all melted now. Hopefully you can see that there. So the temperature should just be around 70 degrees. Uh, 71.7 if you can see that. So that's perfect. So now there's no need to rush or panic. Make sure you have everything already laid out. All your preparation is done beforehand. Now you're waiting for the wax to cool down to the right temperature for when you add your fragrance oil. I haven't added the fragrance oil yet because you add the fragrance oil when the wax cools down to the correct temperature. But the correct temperature is the right temperature for the fragrance oil, not for the wax. So a lot of the wax companies say the best temperature to add the fragrance oil for the wax but they don't know the quality of the oil you're using. So the most important ingredient that goes into a, a scented product, so wax melt or candle, is the fragrance oil. The, the, the wax itself doesn't determine the quality of your product, it's the fragrance oil that determines the quality of your finished product. The better the fragrance oil quality, the better the quality of your finished product. So that's why you add the fragrance oil for the correct temperature for it, not for the wax. Hopefully that makes sense. So 
Um, whilst this is cooling down, it's probably getting close to the temperature now. So we're just at 70 now. So if you look at the um, product page for whichever fragrance oil you wish to buy from russetbarncandles.co.uk, I give the correct temperature for each oil to add to the wax. So for fresh coffee, in this case, it is 65 degrees Celsius. So if you stir your wax, it'll cool down a bit quicker. So we're at 67.8 now. Because we haven't got much wax in here, it is gonna cool down quicker. The more wax you have, the slower it cools down. So I find that easier. The more wax you have melted, the slower the cooling down process, the easier it is to control. We're at 67 now, so just two more degrees and I'll add the fragrance oil and stir that in. Sixty-six degrees. So I like to be quite accurate when I'm adding my fragrance. So I do find it very important. Right, sixty-five degrees point one. So that's the correct temperature to add this specific fragrance oil. So when I'm pouring it in, I'm stirring at the same time, continuously stirring. As you might notice, I haven't added any dye to this wax. If I was to add dye, so a colorant then I would have added that at 70 degrees, you know, as soon as I've taken it off the, um, off, off the boil, basically. Uh, not boil, but the, the, the melting process. Um, there's no right temperature to add the, the dye, but you want to add it as high a temperature as, as the wax is. So that's added in now. I'm going to stir for almost a minute. The more wax you have, the longer you would need to stir. So fresh coffee is a very pungent, very strong smelling fragrance. So make sure you mix it in good and proper. Again, the more wax you would have had uh, melted, the more you would stir. As there's not much wax, it's stirring in very quickly. So our current temperature now is 59 degrees. You don't really want to be adding your wax to your containers above 60 degrees. 61, 62 should be okay. Any higher, you might melt your containers. But that's all perfect now to pour in. So with the wax that's left, I haven't quite got enough to fill any more containers. So that's why I have a spare smaller containers and I can use it in one of my sample pots. Which is pretty much perfect really. So I'll leave those to cool down now and I'll show you the finished products at the end and we'll stick the labels on. Okay, so it's been a couple hours now. The wax melts have set. I've closed a couple of them. You can see how they've set all nicely. Looking beautiful. Just close these last two. And then just for the sample one, just put the little lid on. I'll get that one labeled up later on. So I'll make my own labels. I will do a video at some point showing you how to make some really nice labels for your product. But yeah, so just a label up. So 
So you can see this is perfectly finished wax melt here. It's a beautiful looking container and I think it looks lovely even when it's uncolored so just a natural color. I don't dye all my my wax melts but I've got all the dye, all the dye options there for you to to choose. I do dye a lot of mine, most of mine I do dye but I think it just looks good even without the dye but yeah if you want to try and stand out a bit more add some dye to your products. So I'm going to get the rest of these labelled up and I will catch you in the next video.